I know just maybe a decade ago, there was a lot of, a lot of challenges happening um, as the space shuttle was being retired, as the Constellation program got canceled. Uh, but I can tell you because of your hard work, Mark, and so many others, and of course, bipartisan support in the House, bipartisan support in the Senate, um, NASA is making a significant comeback. Our budgets are going up, and Mark, you're doing all the right things to help this center be successful in that effort. So thank you, Mark. It is my pleasure to be here today to honor our newest class of astronauts. This is a very exciting day. They represent the first wave of NASA's Artemis Generation astronauts. I want to repeat that. This is the Artemis Generation, and this is the first class of the Artemis Generation astronauts. Artemis is a bold new vision in space exploration uniting the international community. In addition to expeditions on the International Space Station, these astronauts could one day in fact walk on the moon as a part of the Artemis program, and per perhaps one of them could be among the first humans to walk on Mars. Their trailblazing triumphs will transform humanity's presence in our solar system and forever change life here on Earth. In short, they represent the best of humanity and our most fervent hopes for the future. <laughs> no pressure. <clears throat> Without further ado, let's welcome the world's newest astronauts to the stage. to kick off 2020 than honoring this class. What a year for them to join the Corps. 2020 will mark the return of human spaceflight launches with American astronauts on American rockets from American soil. It will also be an important year of progress for our Artemis program our mandate to return to the moon and to get ready for Mars. The title of astronaut has always carried a sense of sweeping excellence. This excellence is earned every day through a rare combination of meticulous effort. Our graduates today have demonstrated uncommon focus, uncommon commitment and dedication during the last two years of very intense training. Exploration is unforgiving and, it, and it's challenging but these astronauts are prepared to propel humanity into the vast unknown, taking us farther than ever before. Today we recognize our new American astronauts as well as two Canadian astronauts who have trained alongside their NASA counterparts the entire way. The integration of US and Canadian astronauts exemplifies the strength that will ultimately prove the Artemis generation successful. We are proud to work with all of our international partners in low Earth orbit, and we are very ex excited to extend these partnerships to the moon, to Mars, and beyond. <laughs> Interestingly, these astronauts here were selected from more than 18,000 applicants, the most that have ever applied to the space agency and they come from many walks of life and they are joined by their Canadian classmates they are the best of the best they are highly qualified and very diverse and they represent all of America by receiving their pins today these astronauts are eligible for 
all kinds of missions in the future. We're talking about missions to the International Space Station on the Commercial Crew Program. We're talking about missions in the Artemis Program to the Gateway. And we're talking about missions, no kidding, to the surface of the Moon. And when we talk about the International Space Station and the Orion Crew Capsule, and we talk about the Gateway itself, these are all programs that are managed by an amazing team of engineers and scientists right here at the Johnson Space Center. Um, so this is a historic graduation, and this is the Johnson Space Center, the home of the astronaut corps, and so many great things are happening here. The technical expertise and skilled background of NASA employees at Johnson and across the agency is unmatched. Right here, we are mul running multiple new programs to take us to the moon, to Mars, and beyond. And Johnson Space Center is leading the way. One of my first initiatives as the NASA Administrator was the Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program. So not only are we going to the moon with amazing astronauts, but we're going to the moon robotically with scientific payloads, and those missions will, beginning, will start beginning as, as soon as early next year. NASA has also recruited numerous commercial and international partners to help propel us to a new era of human space exploration. We can expect even greater progress in 2020, and of course there is a whole lot more, mo more momentum coming in the years ahead. Remember this, in the year 2024, we are going to take not only the next man, but the first woman to the surface of the moon by direction of the President of the United States. We will use the Gateway, our space station in lunar orbit, to give us access to more parts of the moon than ever before. The Gateway is, in fact, a space station around the moon. The Orion crew capsule managed right here at Johnson is how our astronauts are going to get to the moon and of course they're going to launch there on the SLS rocket, the most powerful rocket ever built, which by the way is now core stage complete. It is on a barge heading to the Stennis Space Center for green run testing. There is going to be fire and smoke coming out of the back end of that thing very soon and I as your NASA administrator am very excited about finally seeing that happen. So I want to extend my heartfelt congratulations to our newest astronaut class, the Turtles. I am confident that part of the astronaut generation, you will bring scientific and technological advantages and new things to this nation and in fact to the world that right now we can't even imagine. Would you be willing to share, um, I know you guys are called the Turtles, and gals are called the Turtles. Where did that name come from, and what does that specifically mean? So when we were announced by Vice President Pence a couple years ago, he made a metaphor that if you see a turtle on a fence post, you know it didn't get there by itself. And that's what we are here today. Every person on stage here is a symbol of all the love and support that we've had from our friends, our mentors, our teachers. We wouldn't be here without all that love and support. So thank you. Just remember that no great leap has ever been accomplished without first taking a small step. Awesome. Bob, you made a, a, a great point about 1962 and the audacious goal that was set before the nation. And everybody thought it was impossible, including people that were surrounding President Kennedy at the time, thought he was crazy for making that audacious declaration um, in the House of Representatives. But here's the thing we have today that we didn't have in 1962. Number one, we've got the Johnson Space Center. 
We have, we, yes. It's, it's amazing to think that the infrastructure that was required to make that happen didn't even exist back then, and yet he still declared it so. And of course, it rallied a nation and it made it happen. That is, in fact, why dates are important. And when we think about what we have now with all of the launch infrastructure and all of the mission control infrastructure, the great scientists and the engineers and all of the know-how and understanding we have today, we are in fact going to make this happen to land the next man and the first woman on the moon by 2024. I will also say that this astronaut class has an opportunity to fly in the very near future back to the International Space Station on American-built rockets under the Commercial Crew Program. So we think about commercial crew, we think about the SLS system, the Orion crew capsule, the gateway, and now for the first time since the 1960s, we have funded a human landing system to get from the orbit around the moon down to the surface of the moon to the tune of $600 million. Thank you so much to the senators for helping make that happen. And all of that environmental control, life support system capability, the human to machine interface, and your input on those systems. In fact, you guys are gonna be involved in helping design those systems. And we are grateful for your service and that all that work on those programs will be done right here at the Johnson Space Center. Know this, we have a lot under development. We have more under development right now at NASA than at any point in NASA's history. And that gives you, number one, a lot of opportunity and it gives us a lot of responsibility. Um, and of course, our goal, and I'm saying this for the families, we have one highest priority that is over every other priority, and that is your safety. We are gonna build the absolute best, absolute safest capability with the support from our legislators to make sure that not only you go to the moon or to the International Space Station, and maybe one of you will go to Mars, but you come home safely because that is the ultimate objective. We care about you, we love you, to think about what you're about to do to inspire this nation, to inspire these young folks, it is astonishing. And we think about the people that came before you. You know, we think about, I'll tell you my first memory of something significant that happened in space, I was in fifth grade and Mrs. Powers came in and she was crying because of the Challenger incident. And they rolled in the TVs and we all watched with astonishment. But here's the thing, I'm the first NASA administrator in history that wasn't alive when we put Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on the moon. That, that is a failure of this nation. And we cannot let another generation go by where we don't have people living and working on another world. I want people to remember exactly where they were, as I remember exactly where I was. I want people to remember exactly where they were when under the Artemis program, this generation, the Artemis generation, landed the next man and the first woman on the South Pole of the Moon.